Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today got a little project in the shop. Uh, this is actually for a customer, a viewer, who uh, reached out to me, uh, actually a friend, someone I've known quite a while, uh, professionally through my job. But uh, he uh, has got an old vice that has been out on their family farm for many, many years. And uh, it has some sentimental value to them. And they're really just trying to get this thing where they can have it, use it, and uh, be able to keep it alive in the family because it's been in the family for a really long time. Unfortunately, uh, the screw that goes through this vise, as you can see, uh, got a little issue, a little separation anxiety going on here. So uh, he's asked me if I could make a new screw uh, for this vise, uh, which yeah, we can do that, no problem at all. So um, what? I'm gonna zoom you in here, kind of show you what's going on and we'll get started. I've got a piece of uh, stock here. This is actually something I already had laying around the shop. I'd bought it for a, another job and then we ended up not using it on that job and it's just been kind of been laying in the shop and it's gonna be perfect to do this. It's a little bit larger diameter than what we need, but it's pretty darn close so we can, uh, we can turn it out pretty quick. So let's zoom you in here, show you what we got and uh, come up with a game plan and we'll get to work making this new screw. So here is the screw in question. And as you can see, obviously we got the break in there. That's the main problem we've got. But uh, we're gonna turn this again out of this piece of uh, steel here. This piece of steel is, what is it? Two inches in diameter. The large diameter here is inch and three quarters. So we're gonna have to turn a quarter of an inch off of all of this to get down uh, to that size. You know, if I didn't already have this lane here, I just ordered a piece of inch and three quarter and we wouldn't have to do that. But since I got the stock here, we're gonna use it. This uh, diameter down here is an inch and the thread pitch, this is an Acme thread and I got a thread pitch gauge here and it is three teeth per inch. Now, one thing you'll note when I put my Acme thread pitch on here, see how it doesn't go to the full depth? This is a, what's called a stub acme. Uh, it's the same pitch, but the depth of the teeth is in a stub acme is not as big as in a regular acme thread. So uh, keep that in mind, but I, I did confirm the, the pitch. And uh, I dug around and actually in my box over there of inserts, I had a single point threading tool uh, that is a, three stub acme if this is the perfect profile to cut those so um you know i i have accumulated a bunch of just random inserts over the years and it's like you never know what you're going to need i say that all the time and uh, i got lucky this time i just happened to have an insert that i honestly thought i'd probably never need but it came up and i uh, had it sitting on the shelf so that's great um I'll comment, he wants me to drill the hole through this for the handle, but he said he would take care of the handle. He's gonna, I think, cut this one off and um, put it back in there and weld it back together, what have you. Um, so he, he told me don't worry about the handle, just leave it, leave it alone. Uh, but it does want me to go ahead and get the hole in here for that. Uh, we've got the nut that this screws up on, uh, which will be handy when we're over there trying to do a test fit and I will comment that the uh, the threads in this nut are not in great shape but they're there and they will work and that we're gonna basically we'll probably end up cutting the threads on here to fit the nut rather than cutting the threads to spec with hope that we can um, you know eliminate a little bit of the backlash and what have you in there which is perfectly acceptable in a situation like this. You know, I, I think that this nut will probably last them the rest of their lives. But, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely got a lot of wear in it. And uh, at some point in time, if this vice is used a lot, it's, it's probably gonna need to be uh, replaced or what have you. That'll be a, that would be a job to, to make that. Not necessarily, we'd have to get it cast, drill it out. The, the problem would be finding a, uh, a tap to do those internal threads with. Uh, but probably could find it if, if we needed to. So there you go. Uh, there's our game plan. Uh, let's go get this thing set up over on the lathe and start turning this part out. So first step over here is I need to get a center drill put in the end of this uh, so that we can support it with a, a live center. 
So we're going to start by facing it. I'm supporting this right now using the steady rest. Uh, that's just to give it some support because it is so long sticking out from the chuck. It's just doesn't, it needs some support out here. Now I may have to manually adjust this to get it centered up. What I'm going to do is face it. I know that my tool is set on center. So whenever I come across there, if it meets in the center, um, I know it's right. If it's not, we'll make an adjustment and move it around to get it to where it meets in the center. And then we can put our center drill in there. So let's do it. All right, right there. See how it's a little bit high? What that's telling me is, is I need to move it down. So I'm going to loosen these uh, bottom two screws and we'll tighten the top one. And that's going to push that down a little bit until we get it centered up. Let's take another pass here. And that's meeting in right in the middle. That's what I want. Oops. Let me take one more good cleanup pass here. All right, we should be uh, on center there. Let's get a drill in here and we'll put our center hole in. All right, we got a center drill in here and we are gonna go ahead and put a center in. That should be plenty. All right. Let's put a live center in there, get that steady rest out of the way, and we'll re be ready to start turning. We've got our end supported now with a uh, live center. And again, that just supports this end, keeps any vibrations out, make sure this thing's not flopping around because it is sticking out so long. Our stock is, uh, like we said before, two inches. We're going to an inch and three quarters. We've got a quarter of an inch or 250 thousandths to take off of this diameter. Uh, the total screw needs to be three quarters, I mean, 19 inches long. I've got a mark right here. Uh, just, I'll go a little bit past that. Uh, and we're ready to start turning. We're just gonna get the diameter of the end screw down there. Then we'll come in and, and cut the one inch diameter uh, after that. So, let's see. Let's see how this goes. We're gonna come in here and touch off. I'm gonna do about a hundred thousandths off of the diameter, 50 thousandths off of each side. And uh, so far that looks good. So our, always get asked about speeds and feeds. We're running at 720 RPMs. And uh, my feed rate on this is 5.2 thousandths per revolution. So um, anyway, we're just gonna let that cut on down. Um, chips are slowing chips a little bit, but it's breaking the chips, so that looks good. What I'll do is once I get this cut all the way down, I'm gonna get a measurement. I'll put that in my digital readout. And uh, we know we've got about another 150,000. So roughly after this first pass, they'll need to come off. So I'll let it roll. All right, we're getting close to the end down here. I can kind of see my mark. I'm gonna go a little bit past it so we have plenty of room to clean up there. We'll come back down here to the end and I wanna get some good measurements in there. See where we're at. Make sure we're not turning a taper. That finish turned out beautiful. All right, so we're at about 920 there, about 920 there. Hey, wow, that's awesome. I don't have hardly any taper in this at all, which is, uh, which is great. Um, sometimes you have to adjust the tailstock to get the taper out. But you know, I turned a long part on here not too long ago and I, I did find adjust the, the taper on it. So I'm not too surprised, but it's always good to see that. All right, so my measurement is 1.920. And when you change tools on this, this is gonna change. So I was using a different tool last time. So I wanna make this uh, basically read on here. So it's gonna zero it out, go to 
1.920 and um, that's going to give me an indication of where I'm at now. I can kind of look at this and tell where my cutter is in relationship to the diameter that we're at. And again, we're going to inch 750 thousandths. That diameter is not critical. Uh, we get it anywhere close, we're fine. There's nothing uh, magic about that. But being a machinist, we obviously want to always hit our number as close as possible. Let's uh, continue turning. So I'm just going to dial in another 100 thousandths. That should put us at about one inch 820 on the total diameter. And we'll just let that uh, cut through. Not gonna sit here and make you guys watch it. It takes about five minutes to make that cut, roughly. So uh, we'll let it roll. So the next thing I need to do is I need to cut the one inch diameter and that needs to go 17 inches down. So I'm gonna mark my 17 inches first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna pull my cutter up to the end. And uh, on my digital readout, this one reads the diameter. This one reads how far this uh, travel is right here, moving toward uh, the headstock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zero that out and uh, we'll come out and I'm just gonna pull my carriage in. You can see those numbers running and we're just gonna take it to 17 inches, which is getting close here, right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a mark on the piece of metal. This will just kind of give me an indication of where I'm turning to right there. And we'll come back down to the end. Hopefully you can see that mark right there that we made. That just gives me a visual indication of how far we're going to. We'll go back in here, we'll touch back off again and I'm gonna to try to take a heavier cut here. We were making 100 thousandths cuts, 50 thousandths each side. I'm gonna to try to do a full 100 thousandths steps of cut, which would be 200 thousandths on the, the total. All right, that should be a total of 200 thousandths. And uh, let's see what happens. And it's just slicing it on out of there. Got a little chatter going on, but uh, as long as it doesn't get any worse, I can live with that. This is a rough and cut. We're just trying to get that metal cut out of there. We got three quarters of an inch to take out total. What's going on here? Cutter's getting a little gummy. I don't like the way it's breaking that chip. Let me just come out of there. We're gonna back up, take a little bit lighter pass. Let's do 150 thousandths. Yeah, that looks a lot better. A lot better, yeah. Chip's breaking good. Uh, looks like it's leaving a nice finish. I don't see any vibration in it. We'll just probably go with 150 thousandths depth of cut on these until we get down close to that uh, one inch mark and then start making some finish passes. Again, I'm just trying to get that metal cut out of there as quick as I can and as easy as I can. If I were to play around with some different inserts, I could probably find one that would easily take that, but uh, that particular insert, this seems to be what it's liking. All right, first pass. That did really nice once we went to the 150 thousandths. I'm gonna go ahead and dial in another 150.
I got this turned down. We're about 40 thousandths oversize on it right now. And uh, when I got there, I just kind of stopped and I wanted to let this thing cool down uh, before we finished it up. Um, as with any material, when you introduce heat to it, it's going to expand and contract depending on the temperature, whether you're heating it up or cooling it off. And uh, we want this thing to kind of measure what we want to at room temperature. It had gotten pretty hot while we were turning it, which made it read a larger diameter than what it would be when it cools down. So uh, by pausing and letting this thing cool back down, I'm just making sure that I'm gonna hit my number a little bit better, so, or get it right on where it needs to be. So we're about 40 thousandths over. What we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'll probably just dial in 20 thousandths, clean it off, get a good measurement, and then we'll do a cleanup pass and be done. All right, we're gonna let that go across and then we'll come back and measure it and uh, make our final pass. All right, we're cutting that last little 10 thousandths of an inch off on here right now. Uh, this should be our final one inch diameter. And uh, once we get this turned out, I'll double check everything. Make sure we don't have to do any kind of uh, manipulating or getting it with any taper or what have you. So far, the taper has been within a thou or two at the most that I've measured, and most of it's been right on the money, so I'm not worried about that. On a thread like this, you've got a pretty good tolerance on what that diameter can be anyway, so, uh, you know, we hit it within five, ten thousandths. We're, we're golden, but we're trying to hit it, of course, right on the numbers, uh, which is what we always try to do. So let's let it roll on across, and uh, we'll get set up to cut some stub acne threads here just shortly. Well, guys, I think we're going to take a break there and uh, divide this video up into two parts. So uh, when we come back, we'll be doing the Acme thread. So we got this, uh, this shaft turned down for the screw, uh, got our two diameters right where we need them to be, and we are ready to go ahead and upcoming episode, we'll be cutting those Acme threads, uh, getting all that stuff, getting that nut to fit, as well as do some hole drilling and what have you to get for the handle and a couple other little pieces. So I'll be looking for that video coming up soon. But in the meantime, uh, that's going to be a wrap for the day. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get the notifications when uh, new videos are posted to the channel. And uh, with that, guys, uh, we're going to catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.